This is Justin Carter. I'm a security industry specialist who worked for a private security company in Seattle, Washington. I am no longer employed by this company. I chose to leave because I could no longer in good conscience work for a corrupt company that is involved in a highly illegal federal program that is blatantly violating the constitutional rights of American citizens on a daily basis. My company had a contract with one of the largest, most powerful corporations in America that is headquartered in Seattle, Washington. During my time as a security specialist, I became aware of a massive social engineering program taking place in America today. What follows is a voice recording that I made some time ago. It is with laws that protect whistleblowers in mind that I am choosing to make this information available to the public. By doing so, I hope to put pressure on those in power in this country to investigate those involved in this social engineering program and bring them to justice. This social engineering program involves the federal government of the United States of America, the intelligence agencies of the United States of America, private security contractors, some of the largest corporations in America, local and state police, and social programs within the inner cities of America. This social engineering program experiments on the homeless and experiments on the financially struggling and experiments on individuals that do not have a lot of family and friends or money so that they have no means to defend themselves from this parasitic, disgusting program. This program utilizes a technology that most know as voice to skull technology. It is a electromagnetic frequency machine, an electromagnetic frequency technology that utilizes radio frequency signals, microwave auditory effect to induce sound within the cranial cavity of the target. This makes the individual believe that they are hearing sounds and voices that are coming from within their own head when in fact they are being beamed into their head via this technology. This technology is also used to manipulate the emotions of the individual. This technology manipulates the electrical signals in the brain, thus controlling thoughts and feelings and emotions and sensations throughout the body. It works by rewiring the brain by creating new neuropathways and destroying existing neuropathways. Thus, this literally changes the way a person thinks and thus behaves. It is used to control muscle movement. This technology can also be used to control the muscle movement of the target. It can take over one's hands or feet while driving and make you press on the accelerator or press on the brake or turn. This can be used to cause accidents. It can also be used to prevent accidents from happening. This technology can also tap into the optical nerve of the target and the auditory system of the target so that those monitoring the target can see what the target is seeing and hear what the target is hearing. This information is then downloaded and stored on a computer in a highly secure classified site on servers that are guarded by some of the tightest security in the world. This results in the individual's entire day, everything they see, everything they hear, everything they experiment, everything they experience and everything they feel being recorded till the end of time. This technology can also be used to manipulate the emotions of the target. It can induce fear, love, hate, It can cause you to be nervous. It can cause you to be confident. It can cause you to be depressed. It can cause you to be happy. It can cause you to feel any fucking emotion at any time by artificially inducing them. This technology can be used to beam images and even motion pictures into one's brain. Images and motion pictures that are so realistic 
that you think you're actually watching a movie or seeing something in reality. It's like a virtual, virtual reality 3D rendering that takes place within the target's mind. The images and motion pictures uh, manifest themselves in such a way that the target, if they are not aware that this technology is being used on them, will believe that they are natural thoughts and natural images. This technology can also be used to induce and control dreams. It can be used to control dream cycles and sleep patterns, to cause one to sleep very deeply or to cause one to not sleep at all. REM cycles, alpha, beta, and delta brainwaves can be induced immediately by this technology. And this technology can also be used to mimic spiritual experiences. Joy, love, peace that passes understanding can all be induced artificially by this technology to make the target believe that they are having a genuine spiritual experience when they're not. This use of the technology uh, was famously made public during the war on terrorism as the United States of America utilized it against so-called enemy combatants in places like Iraq and Afghanistan where people being held hostage by the American military had voice to skull beamed into their heads and the targets there believed that they were actually hearing the voice of God and they believed that Allah himself was telling them to cooperate with the Americans and tell them everything that they want to know. This same technology is now being used against American citizens in America every single day. This technology can also be used to sexually manipulate the target, make them feel sexual arousal, or turn off their sexuality altogether. It can stimulate them, uh, and it can shut them down uh, at a moment's notice. It can also be used to manipulate the hormones of the target, thus lowering and raising estrogen and testosterone levels in women and men, respectively. Again, as I'm trying to get this podcast done, the voice to skull is literally blocking my thought patterns because they do not want this technology exposed because they're having way too much fun with it and way too much power with it. This technology can also be used to read the thoughts of the target in real time. So think about your debit card pin number for example your bank account how much money you have who you're cheating on your significant other with that information is imminently divinable in real time by the people who have access to this technology and they can read your thoughts verbatim as they occur within your own mind the overall effect of this technology is one that can control the mood the attitudes the thoughts the feelings, the emotions, and thus the motivations, and then the actions of the target. All day, every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. It is a highly sophisticated technology. It is one that produces literal and total and complete mind control over the targeted individual. And it is in the hands right now of people that are using it for nefarious purposes, extremely evil and destructive purposes against individuals like myself. I am now a target of this technology because I have decided to speak out about it and try to shed some light on it and try to get some progress in passing laws and bringing this to court and bringing lawsuits against the companies involved against me personally and against others that I have direct knowledge that the technology is being used against. One of the reasons I'm speaking out is because this technology, as horrible as it is, can also be used for truly miraculous purposes. It can be used to help humanity instead of harming humanity. It can be used to save people instead of destroying them. It can be used to literally make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame get up and walk. It can be used to solve many of the problems facing our country and the world today. It can be used to heal amputees, 
military vet- veterans, military veterans who lost a limb as they bravely and honorably served their country to protect me and you and preserve our freedoms here at home. Those who lost a limb in the, in the line of duty can receive a prosthetic limb, highly technical and highly advanced, and then this technology can be used to restore full feeling and functionality to that restored limb. It can also be used to cure diseases by healing cells, manipulating genes, and indeed manipulating the DNA of the target in real time. I have seen this technology used to repair ACL strains, MCL strains, sprained knees in a period of hours as if someone laid hands on the individual and healed them instantly. As an educated man and a man who has spent my life serving others in the security industry, and before that, pursuing an education that was geared towards helping people, I'm extremely frustrated that this technology has fallen into the hands of people that are using it in the manner that they currently are. These people are juvenile and sophomoric in attitude. They're irresponsible in disposition. And they are completely out of control in terms of the way that they are using it against the American people. As a security specialist, I saw them use this technology to experiment on their own workers. My fellow security specialists were experimented on in the workplace and outside of the workplace. These test subjects, as they're called, which is a real sick term to use for a walking, talking human being with feelings and a soul and a spirit and a mind, is more valuable than anything else on earth. They're referred to as test subjects, are not only experimented on both inside and outside of the workplace in the security company that I worked for in Seattle, Washington. They are also monitored 24-7 by a system of surveillance Uh, that many on the internet uh, would probably recognize as gang stalking. These are security specialists employed by private security companies. They are also highly trained intelligence agents. These personnel are used to monitor the test subject 24 hours a day, both inside and outside of the workplace. They are assigned to live with the test subject wherever they're residing in an apartment. Many of them actually were were residing in homeless shelters while they were working for us. No respect given. No care uh, was afforded to them by any of the people running this program. They were treated like cattle. They were treated like lab rats. And they were not respected or valued at all by the motherfuckers running this program. They're evil in a way that I cannot understand and I do not want to understand. It was my differences of opinion with them once I became aware of the full extent of this program that caused me to object, to confront them about it, to eventually quit my job over it. And as a result, I became a target of this program myself. They beam into my head now on a daily basis. You're the lab rat now, motherfucker. Don't you ever fucking cross us and don't you dare think about speaking out about this or we'll fucking kill you as many of the test subjects so called the people are being experimented on or as within the program as they're called a target as many of them have already learned one of the key means of covering up this program is to use the psychological profession to do so. Those who speak out about this issue are funneled to psychiatrists for evaluation. The psychiatrists are working with those who are running this program. In many cases, they are directly paid by them to render a diagnosis of schizophrenic, multiple personality disorder, delusional, paranoid, depressed, upon the test subjects, the targets, so that they
will be discredited so that if they talk out any further or they ever start making any progress against this program, they are inherently discredited because the, those who run this program will simply release the psychological files and claim that the person is mentally ill. This is a perfect way to cover up such a technology whose main feature and, and most popular feature, most well-known feature, is voice to skull which induces sound within the cranial cavity of the test subject, of the target themselves, so that when that person goes to speak out about it, when they go to seek help from their fellow human beings, and their fellow human beings say, what is it that's happening to you? The target will then say, I'm hearing voices inside my head. It's the result of voice to skull technology. It's a sophisticated microwave auditory effect. It's radio frequency signals that are being beamed at my fucking head that are causing me to hear sounds and voices inside my head. Obviously, if members of the general public are not aware of the existence of this technology, which many of them are not, most of them are not, then they will interpret that as concerning. They will feel concern for the target. And they will conclude that this person must be crazy. And as a result, they will recommend psychological evaluation for that person. You can see the way this is going to go and the way it is going right now. As good people, helpless people that are being abused and tortured and enslaved and experimented upon in America today, American citizens cry out for help from their fellow Americans and their fellow Americans say, why don't you take some Prozac because we think you're schizophrenic when this is a highly technical program, all of the symptoms are induced by a technology that is so fucking sophisticated, it is horrifying beyond description. But what is more horrifying, being familiar with this technology, this program, and the people involved in it, is the reaction of people within it to the target themselves. There is no sympathy, there is no empathy. They are seen as cattle, they are seen as slaves, and they have no rights at all. And it's infuriating, and that's why I decided to speak out about it. One aspect of this technology that most people are not aware of is a, many of the things I've, written, I've uh, read on the Internet. And I want to take a moment to thank everybody who has spoken out on this issue, targeted individuals who are getting this shit beamed into their head every fucking day and are somehow managing to survive and to hold it together. I want to thank you. You are my hero. You are the reason that I am able to keep going every day. You're the reason that I have not given up. And you are the reason why I'm speaking out now about it. As an industry insider and someone who has full knowledge of the entire workings of this entire program, I felt the responsibility to speak out to help people like you. Because my heart goes out to you every time I see you post something online. And I know there's millions more of you out there that have not been able to post anything online. And I want you to know that I support you, we all support you, and we need to get through this together. And it is my hope that by speaking out, more insiders who are part of this program, security specialists for private security companies, primarily, but also those within the intelligence agencies, the military branches of this country, the federal government, local and state law enforcement, and also the social programs of America, Please come forward. Please help out. Please get off your fucking ass. Stop remaining silent and speak out on this. And if you can't do that, because believe me, one of the reasons I have not spoken out up to this point is for concern and for family and friends. People I know that I'm concerned for their safety because of the jackasses running this program have proven themselves to be nothing but a bunch of thugs. A bunch of heartless, moralist, spiritless, soulless fucking robots that do not have any empathy, sympathy, or love for their fellow human beings. And so I am very concerned about those around me who I love and care very deeply about. I'm also concerned for my fellow security specialists who are still employed by my company that I used to work for and other companies like it. Because the way these motherfuckers work is if you don't go along with our program, then you're out. 
and you are going to be isolated for the rest of your fucking life. And anybody who tries to help you is going to feel our wrath as well. But I decided it's time. There's nothing I can fucking do in terms of what they're going to do to me or other people. These people are going to do what they want to us no matter what, which leaves me in a position of having no choice. I have to speak out. But as a security specialist, as an insider with detailed information of this entire fucking program and how it works from top to bottom, I am privy to uh, some details that most are not. And that is that the true way that this technology works is that a complete DNA profile is obtained from the target, from the individual, the targeted individual. And that DNA profile is obtained by collecting either urine, sperm, hair, blood, samples. One of the most um, effective ways of doing this is to do it through the targeted individual's employer. If you go to apply for a job and you're required to provide a urine screening, a drug test as a term and as uh, a condition for being hired, These people will actually intercept your sample. And they do this by contracting uh, with labs. Labs like LabCorp, Quest Diagnostics, etc., etc., who provide lab services for employers who are doing massive amounts of drug tests and blood tests and also uh, the involvement of sperm banks uh, was mentioned in some of the information I saw uh, working for my company. These are perfect ways to acquire an individual's DNA, build a DNA profile on them. And then this information, the DNA of the individual, is used to determine the resonant frequency of the DNA itself. The resonant frequency is then used to fine-tune the technology, the radio frequency signals, the microwave auditory effect, and all the other aspects of the technology to tune it perfectly to the resonant frequency of the targeted individual's DNA. This is one of the reasons why many targeted individuals believe that there are nano technology, nanobots inside of their body. Smart dust, things of this nature, nanofibers that completely fill the target's body. And based on some of the scientific papers that I've seen written on this, this is possible and it is going on. Uh, but it is a lower form of the technology. It is a less advanced form of the technology. The true holy grail in terms of this technology is DNA resonant frequency. It taps right into the DNA and it does it remotely by resonating with the exact frequency that your DNA resonates. Because all matter in the universe resonates. All matter is animated by sound. Matter itself is enabled by sound. And so the resonant frequency of the DNA is what they use to fine tune the technology to take total control of your entire body, spirit, soul, being, and mind. It's total, not only mind control, it's total human being control. And it is the essential element that allows them to manipulate your emotions so totally and completely, to manipulate your thoughts so totally and completely, to manipulate everything you do and see and hear and think and feel every single minute of every single day. So totally and completely. It's horrible. It's horrifying. And it is a crime against humanity. This is something that needs to be dealt with in the Geneva Convention. This is something that needs to be dealt with in international courts. This is something that needs to be dealt with first and foremost by the Supreme Court of the United States. This is something that needs to be dealt with until we get to that point at the local and the state level. This is something that needs to be tackled by lawyers and civil rights advocates immediately. We need laws right fucking now to stop this thing because it is out of control and it is only getting worse. The entire population of the United States of America could conceivably be controlled by this one day. And I know for a fact, having been an insider and actually been a part of this program and seen it operate on a day-to-day basis, I am aware 
that there are now entire cities in America that are nothing more but a massive social engineering experiment. Because instead of using this, you know, as most people think, just against the individual, the targeted individual, there are applications of this technology I am now aware of that utilize it against entire populations. Anywhere from small groups of people, 10 to 20 to 100, to medium-sized groups of people, several thousand to to tens of thousands. This is done by creating a field effect where an entire field of electromagnetic energy is created in a geographical location. And any human being within that geographical location, within the electromagnetic field, affecting that geographical location will be affected by the technology. This can be used to induce a general mood in a population or a crowd of people. It can be used to make them passive. It can be used to make them agitated. And this can be used to cause or stop, induce riots, stop crime, start crime, stop thoughts, start thoughts. Massive mind control on a citywide level. And one of the population centers that I am aware of that this is going on, full tilt, full steam ahead, no holds barred, fucking all out social engineering, mind control, manipulation, emotional control, manipulation of the entire fucking population, both on the macro level and the micro level, the societal level and the individual level is the city of Seattle, Washington. It is absolutely horrifying. The entire city of Seattle, Washington is now being used as a social engineering experiment. And the test subjects are the American people who are unfortunate enough to reside in that beautiful city. When I lived there, I met many great people, beautiful people, people with great spirits and great minds and great souls, genuinely good people. And it breaks my heart to know what's being done to them by some real sick evil, out-of-control people who have taken their positions of power and authority and taken advantage of it. They have violated the trust of the American people. They have violated the trust of the stockholders and their companies. They have violated the trust of their co-workers. They violated the trust of their employees. They violated the trust of their family and their friends. They violated the trust of their children. And they violated the trust of of all Americans everywhere, and indeed all human beings all over the planet. They have violated that trust by using their positions of power to conceal themselves from scrutiny and then use that veil of secrecy to launch what amounts to an attack on a nonviolent American population who are just trying to live their lives and make a living and be happy love their friends and family, and do the best they can. And it is the complicity of the military, the intelligence agencies, the social workers, private security uh, contractors, major American corporations, local and state police that is allowing this to happen. And it's a goddamn disgrace. You are the people. We are the people in my industry who are supposed to be protecting the American people, who are supposed to be serving the American people, who are supposed to be preserving our way of life and protecting the Constitution so that our children do not grow up in a hell on earth, so that horrible, evil people do not get control of this country and have the ability to harm our loved ones, our friends, and our family. And I always thought that that was a possibility for the future. I'm aware of some of the predictions of the future and the direction the country's going, and and it could get really bad. Some horrible things could happen in the future. And one of the things I've been struggling with, trying to wrap my mind around, is that this is not about the future at all. It's happening right now in America today. And it's a goddamn disgrace. And I struggled with this for a long, long, long time trying to decide what I should do about it because there's not much that the individual can do about it. As I've already detailed, 
and I'll detail more over time in future podcasts, the individual is at a complete disadvantage. And the tactics and the methods that are used by those who are running this fucking program are perfectly, I'm afraid to say, designed to make the individual completely ineffective in any efforts of trying to fight against it and stop it. So when I was faced with this reality, the only option I have is to speak out on it, speak out loud, speak out often, and give as much information as I can to get it out there to try to protect myself and protect everybody else that's unlucky enough to be a target of this program. In addition to the technology that is commonly referred to as voice to skull, there is also another element, a human element, to this program that is commonly known as gang stalking. This program involves personnel of the federal government, America's armed forces, the military, the intelligence agencies of America, military intelligence, private security contractors, private corporations, local and state police, and social programs in cities all over America. The personnel in these agencies and companies are contracted and paid very well to follow and monitor and surveil American citizens. This is the phenomenon that is now being talked about online as gang stalking. This gang stalking aspect of this program is now becoming an open secret as the companies that are involved with it do not fear detection. They don't fear being exposed in any way. And so they are getting bold uh, with their actions. And as a result, they're slipping up a bit and the average citizen can divine some information from that by knowing where to look. When I lived in Seattle, Washington, there was a competing security company that was running an ad online for employment saying help wanted. The position that was available was a security specialist. The requirements for the position were a cell phone that works with good reception. They must be on call 24 hours a day and they must be ready to respond at a, mo at a moment's notice. The ad detailed that both static and mobile positions were available. Being a security specialist myself, I recognized this ad immediately as one that was hiring gang stalkers. My company was involved in the exact same activity and I was aware of other private security companies that were hiring gang stalkers as well. The job consists of being on call 24 hours a day. You must be ready to respond immediately and be ready to go. You must have a cell phone that works at all times. And once you receive a call or a text message, you are given instructions, a place to go, a place to be, and also the activities that you're to carry out. Now, in the normal course of security duties, this would be to surveil a target, to secure a location, to secure a person, to do advance on an area. The other thing that gives it away is the security company that placed this ad is known as a gang stalking organization. What happened in the security industry is a boom in business. Directly after 9-11, uh, connected to the war on terror. As we began to fight more wars overseas, we had more people in the military and in the intelligence services of the United States of America. And God bless them. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for your service. You're the reason I'm al allowed to be free in my country, or at least I was. And I truly appreciate your efforts and the sacrifices you've made for me and indeed all Americans. But once someone finishes their tour of duty in the active military, they come back home. And the pension plan and the VA, as much as they try to take care of our veterans, don't do a very good job of it. And so many of our veterans need to seek employment on the home front. And when they get home to America their skills in the military only translate to certain industries such as the Department of Homeland Security which were created as a response to 9-11 and now employs millions of people across this country. It is also an intricate part of this social engineering program. The Department of Homeland Security is prominent in downtown Seattle. 
directly across from a homeless shelter, directly across from a homeless shelter where this program is known to be run on homeless men who are experimented on like lab rats, much like my fellow security specialists were experimented on uh, at my company. Upon returning from war, our servicemen and women, many of them have been offered jobs within Homeland Security. And many of them have taken them and they've done a fine job of protecting our country. Many others, however, have been hired by private security companies, like the one I work for. This is a booming industry. It is one of the most fastest growing industries in America today, the private security industry. And it has gone almost completely unnoticed and under the radar to the average American. Even on the internet, in the realm of alternative research and conspiracy theories, private security companies are very rarely mentioned. And yet they, in my opinion, play maybe the most prominent role, especially in the gang stalking aspect of the social engineering program that I described, but also in the implementation, the experimentation, and the fine-tuning of the technology that most know as Voice to Skull. These private security companies have basically done nothing but hire ex-military and ex-intelligence agents and operatives from the armed forces of the United States of America and put to them and put them to work here at home. So you can see how within the private security industry, the knowledge, the skills, the know-how, the expertise of how to run not only the technology, but the logistical operations day-to-day of a gang stalking and domestic social engineering program will be built into the personnel that are hired by the private security companies because they are largely hiring ex-military and ex-intelligence assets. In fact, many of these private security companies on their website will advertise that they are a veteran-friendly employer. This is code within the industry to let them know that ex-military and ex-intelligence agents are needed within the private security company for carrying out the exact type of operations that I'm detailing in this podcast. As a security industry specialist myself, I am aware that one of the primary relationships and responsibilities of a primary of a private security company is the responsibility that they have to the companies they contract with. A private security company contracts with a client, and it is that client's needs that are met by the private security company. The private security company I've worked for, as I said, was contracted with one of the largest corporations in America who is headquartered in Seattle, Washington. It is the needs of the client that are the primary concern of the private security company. And therefore, when one understands the activities of the private security company vis-a-vis the gang stalking voice to skull and social engineering program that I witnessed as a security specialist, one must consider the private corporation that the private security company is contracted with, the client in industry jargon. Our client had us doing some very curious things with our time. As part of our contract with our client, we had to provide security for all their buildings. We also had to secure their data, their servers, upon which some of the most sensitive information, not only within corporate America, but within the United States of America, and indeed the world, is stored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and must be guarded. As a private security company, we are privy to what is on those servers. This is why I found it very interesting when as part of my responsibilities as a security specialist, I discovered that the needs of our client included securing their databases upon which certain information was stored. I was shocked to learn that this information included a massive DNA database. whose purpose was to store, categorize, 
and render in usable form to doctors and scientists the DNA profiles of millions of Americans. DNA itself consists of billions and billions of data points that all be that must all be mapped and this alone is an almost impossible task and it's taken our scientists our brightest scientists in this country uh, decades to even be able to store DNA data on a computer file on a on a server once this data is stored on a server it that you then must develop a software that is capable of rendering the DNA data in a usable form so that scientists and doctors can utilize it for their own purposes in an efficient manner. You can imagine the logistical problem of going through billions and billions and billions of data points to try and do something with it. It's very, very difficult. The Human Genome Project, of course, is the famous effort to map the human genome. It is now complete, by the way. They have mapped the human genome. I'm not sure that everybody's aware of that, but it's very significant because the mapping of the human genome means total and complete understanding of what makes us human beings, of what makes us who we are. It also allows scientists and doctors access to the entire human genome for the purposes of developing medicine and treatment and scientific know-how and scientific know-how for the curing of of diseases and improving the lifespans and the general quality of life for the American people and human beings in general. Unfortunately, with this amazing advance in science and technology comes a risk, a very dire risk that we all must be aware of. And that is that individuals' DNA are now completely mapped and being completely stored in servers by America's largest corporations, DNA databases that are now accessible by scientists for the purposes of coming up with cures for diseases and medicines that can help Americans have a better way of life. One of the applications of this technology is is to try to develop individual specific treatments for individual people. For example, if you have a medical condition that requires a certain type of medicine under the current medical treatment theory, you would be given the exact same medicine that thousands of other people are given for your medical condition. What this DNA database makes possible is the development of specific medicines, pharmaceuticals that are geared and engineered and tailored to the individual instead of the disease. Scientists are excited about this because it can lead to huge breakthroughs in the curing of diseases and medical conditions and make huge advancements in the overall health of the general population. You can also imagine the price tag attached to a scientific research project such as this. The money involved in this is truly mind-boggling. As a security industry specialist, I quickly became aware that DNA databases like this were one of our primary concerns, one of our primary responsibilities to our client. In fact, on a day-to-day basis, some of the more mundane tasks of a security specialist and of, our, of my security company, fell by the wayside and suffered neglect and were, in, in fact, in, ignored entirely by upper management in favor of focusing resources and personnel to the more important matters that the client wanted taken care of. These included, of course, the obvious one, which was securing the CEO, the CEO's property, the CEO's data, and the CEO's buildings. This is an assignment which I personally partook in and was very proud to serve. The other main priority was to secure the DNA database upon which the DNA of millions of Americans are stored. 
you can see how as I became more and more familiar with this program, I became more and more interested and as time went on, more and more concerned. As I just described earlier in this podcast, the way the technology works, the voice to skull, is to tap into the resonant frequency of the DNA of the individual, the targeted individual. And this allows total mind, spirit, and body control over the individual by those who are running this program. Since I saw on a daily basis how intimately involved in this program of voice to skull social engineering and gang stalking my private security company was, I couldn't help but notice that our client, one of the largest corporations in America and indeed the world, just happened to have a massive database of DNA on its property. A DNA database that stores the DNA of millions of Americans, including the employees of not only the client, but also my private security company. This piqued my interest because I was fully aware that my company was experimenting with voice-to-skull technology and emotional manipulation technology on its own employees. How may they have achieved this? Well, as I've already described, it would go something like this. Someone needs a job and they apply to a private security company. They probably do this online like most of us do when we apply for jobs. They're then contacted by the private security company and said, please come in for an interview. They come in for an interview and they're told, we want to hire you, but of course you're going to have to submit a drug test. You're going to have to prove to us that you're not on drugs in order for us to hire you. It's a condition of employment. What you don't understand and what I didn't understand is whether or not they hire the individual is not necessarily the primary concern because the prospective employee would go take the drug test and eagerly await word back from my private security company to see whether or not they're hired and look forward to a long and prosperous career as a security specialist, as indeed I did. But from the point of view of the security company, and more importantly, from the point of view of the client's The sleight of hand has already taken place. The primary objective has already been achieved. When the prospective employee went to the interview and was told to submit a drug test, because of my close work with the social engineering program that I describe in detail, I am aware that the private security company takes the drug test of the prospective employee. It is sent to a lab via LabCorp or Quest Diagnostics in this case, a drug test is performed. But DNA that is obtained through the process of the drug test is siphoned off and sent to the client. The client then takes this DNA and adds it to its DNA database where a full DNA profile of the individual is created, added to the database, and stored. And as I mentioned, this is the most valuable asset on the property. The eye-opening aspect of this to me was, at the time, that it was not just employees of the private security company that were subjected to this experimentation that I witnessed in the workplace. At the time, I was under the impression it was just our employees that were being experimented on. Once I realized that actual DNA, genetic material, was being siphoned off to drug test, urine samples, blood samples, and saliva samples collected in the process of hiring, I became very concerned. And so for every one employee of the private security company I worked for, there are many dozens more, potentially, that were not hired. And you can see how over time, as ads are continued to be run online and people continue to apply for the job, more and more DNA and genetic material is collected and siphoned off to the client and the client puts it in its DNA database 
which now stores the DNA of millions of Americans, and that number is growing every day. So what I'm saying to you is that a major American corporation, the private security company that provides security for that client, and on up the line to the U.S. federal government itself, are involved in collecting genetic material from American citizens and storing it on DNA ba databases without the American's consent. This is a highly illegal practice. This is not classified information, by the way. At least not all aspects of the program are. In fact, you can find information on this DNA database online right now. There are several major American corporations that are building databases like these for the purposes of allowing scientists to have a workable relationship with DNA itself to make all of the progress that I mentioned that's possible by individual-specific medicines and cures and approaches to disease. The problem is that this D DNA genetic material is also being used to fine-tune a very destructive and horrific technology that's being used to terrorize uh, not only employees of the private security industry, but average Americans all over this country. Targeted individuals everywhere are being terrorized by voice-to-skull technology and the associated gang-stalking program that is used to isolate the individual from family, friends, interfere with their ability to work, and, in short, destroy their lives. This leaves the individual hopeless and destitute, depressed, and many of them struggle to find a reason to keep on living. They reach out for help from family and friends and loved ones and neighbors. And a systematic gang-stalking program is run against them in order to isolate them from society. Their emotions, their thoughts, their minds, their heartbeat, their muscle movements, their dreams, their thoughts, everything they see and everything they hear is all recorded and manipulated by this technology. And all of this is made possible by the people running this program utilizing the technology to tap into the resonant frequency of the individual's DNA. Therefore, I think one of the key ways to make progress against this technology and those running this program is to identify the ways by which the people in this program are getting their hands on Americans' DNA. Where is that DNA being collected? How is it being shipped? Where is it being stored? What companies are involved? What individuals are involved? Who is developing the software to do so? And who are the scientists that are utilizing this DNA for their research? Who is funding those scientists in terms of grants that they're receiving from the government or through private means? When you approach an illegal program taking place on American soil that is this large in scale, this, that is this monstrous in intention, and it is this destructive to individual Americans and indeed society as a whole, one struggles because of lack of hope. One thinks that it's way too big for me to do anything about as an individual. And in many cases, this is absolutely true. We are at a tremendous disadvantage in terms of fighting this thing. However, one thing that may be on our side in this fight and one thing that we should consider utilizing as a key tactic in our strategy to defeat this gang stalking and voice to skull and social engineering program is the scale of the program itself. Something this massive is very hard to cover up. Something this va massive is very hard to hide. As a result, aspects of this program are going to be detectable in all different aspects of society. As I've already detailed, the federal government, the military, intelligence agencies, private security companies, private corporations, local and state police, social programs, homeland security, individuals and groups all over the country are either involved in, are working with, are related to, are friends with, or acquaintances with people in this program. 
the DNA aspect that I detailed, the databases, the private corporations. People are developing software. People are doing paperwork. People are firing off emails every single day with regards to aspects of this program within the private security industry. There are aspects of this program everywhere. My company basically did this and nothing else. They siphoned off other contracts they had with other clients, said, sorry, we don't want to help you anymore because we are going to do this full time. As a result, I now believe that the company I work for is one of the primary participants and is playing a key role in this program. I also believe that they may be diversifying in order to avoid the light of day to hide, so to speak, from any exposure that may be coming their way. This program employs a lot of gang stalkers. It employs a lot of social workers. Like I said, it's being used within the city of Seattle to experiment on the homeless population there. This means that the social workers that work for the social programs in the city of Seattle are aware of it going on. I have direct personal knowledge that this is the case, as I know many of the social workers that are involved in this program directly. They're good people. They're beautiful people. However, I believe that they are in a position where they fear for their safety, and they go along to get along. And until one person speaks out, it's very, very difficult to be the one that does it. It is my hope that by me speaking out, I will inspire other people's people to do the same and start a chain reaction of people coming forward that will begin to shed some light on this program with the ultimate goal of shutting it the fuck down. There are people within local law enforcement that are a part of this program. Any one of them could have come forward at any time and expose it. There are people within massive private corporations, the biggest names in America. The names of corporations that you see every time you pick up your smartphone and click on an app. Every time you go to Google and you Google something. Anything you Google is going to turn up the name of one of the companies involved in this. Anyone within the private security industry can come forward and speak out on this at any time. But once you go from social workers and private corporations to things like private security intelligence agencies and the military, things become much more difficult for someone to speak out. This is one of the reasons I had such a hard time struggling with the decision I made. There is an atmosphere of intimidation. There is an atmosphere of of camaraderie and brotherhood. All of which in many different, completely different ways dissuade the individual from coming forward, from speaking out, from being the one to rock the boat. It is out of a genuine desire to serve and protect that the vast majority of people within this private security industry choose to serve and choose to work in that industry. They are brave and honorable people, and I respect and I love all of them. And it breaks my heart to see them being experimented on by their co-workers. And it needs to stop immediately. However, also within the private security industry, you have people that are not so pure of intention. These are people, as I already said, who are ex-law enforcement, ex-military, and ex-intelligence agents. Unfortunately, in these lines of work, it is sometimes beneficial to the individual to know how to get around the law, to skirt the rules, to understand how to get away with stuff. For example, within the intelligence community, this is pretty much the only thing that people do. It has been developed to a highly sophisticated science. Sleight of hand. Deception. Well, most people would think of as magic, as daily routine for these people and their responsibilities as part of their job. This makes it very, very difficult to make progress if these people are in power, particularly overseeing a program like this, for they are masters of deception. 
their entire business is making sure that they get away with stuff and making sure that they are able to detect when other people are trying to get away with stuff and prevent it from happening. These people, the better of them are the tip of the spear to make sure that you're able to sleep at night without fear of being harmed. These are the people that risk their lives every day to make sure that the American way of life is preserved. That's why it breaks my heart beyond all description and pisses me off to no end when these very same people take advantage of the American people's trust and their positions of power to fuck over the American people, torch our Constitution, experiment on our women, our children, our sons and our daughters, our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers. The very training, skill set, and dedication that make these people the very best in the world at what they do are the very same traits that make these people America's worst nightmare when they get into positions of power and they misuse that power. I understand that it's easier to go along with it than fight this thing. But if anyone can do it, I know that you can. In fact, you're the only ones that can do it. You're the only ones with the training and the expertise to take this thing on and defeat it. And I need your help.